I just had this idea about making content dedicated to some of the most popular hacking tools or even just a focus with bug bounties or recon that a lot of people use and I can give you my opinion and feedback on whether or not these tools are worth it or you should actually use them in your day-to-day -day hacking. Starting with Kaido for this episode because of the fact that Kaido has been getting a lot of attention and a lot of people are talking about it and you've probably seen me post this tweet right here where I said I'm going to start using Kaido moving forward and give it a try and ever since I've posted that tweet, a lot of you guys have been asking me whether or not this will replace Burp Seed or if I like it more or what my take is on Kaido. So before I answer that question, you gotta do me a favor, drop me a comment, let me know what tool you want me to cover in an upcoming episode and I can hopefully create content on it and pick a winner based on your comments and feature it in one of my upcoming releases. Now let's talk about Kaido and whether or not I personally think that it's going to replace Burp Seed and I honestly think that depends on the person and what your goals are and what you do as a hacker, whether you're doing pen testing, bug bounties, or whatever your use case is for Burp Suite. For me personally, right now, it's not that I like one over the other. I just have been switching to Kaido to give something new a try. And I also wanted to just experiment with Kaido to also tell you guys what I think about it. And personally, for me, as of right now, yes, it has replaced Burp Suite, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's forever. Now, let's talk about Kaido itself. So first of all, it's really important to note that Kaido is actually on a beta release. As you can see right here, it says beta. So they're not fully launched yet, but with this version that's available as of now, I think they have done a lot of amazing cool stuff that we'll jump into later on. But the one thing that I want to highlight is the price point. If you look at the pricing, you can see that you are currently paying about $100 a year in comparison to Burb Suites, $450 I think is the price point. And you can actually pay for this monthly. So if you don't want to pay annually, you can pay a little bit more, but pay it monthly. So for example, if you want to do a summer project or maybe hack on bug bounties for the summer or for your break, you can actually just pay the $30. And I think that's a really cool way to make it more affordable. And I think it's really cool because that makes it easier and more accessible for people that don't want to spend the money up front. The next thing is downloading it super easy. You have the option to do CLI and you can actually do it as the executable for your desktop environment. So I'm going to do Mac OS. That's what I have. I've already installed it. So we're going to skip that part and dive right into how Kaido looks. Right off the bat, one of my favorite things with Kaido is that you can actually create a lot of different projects here and you can switch between them very easily. And it's just if you are, for example, let's look at the scope right here or our site map in here. I can quickly switch back and forth between the two projects by just going to one or the other and kind of like looking through them and it's really quick and it goes back and forth between them. I'm gonna click this pen test that's empty right now uh, for this video and I'm gonna use it as our empty project to kind of show you what it looks like when you launch it. So the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna get our browser, make it ready. We're going to make sure our proxy is on and then we're gonna to go to Kaido, make sure we are catching stuff and if I refresh the page, pretty standard, it intercepts it and sends it here. There's only one request in this page. So that's the only thing that's gonna be shown. But the cool thing that I do like about the intercept tab here, which is one of probably my most used tools in a proxy tool that anytime that you go to a website, it will show you all the requests that's being made all at once. And if we go to Airbnb really quickly, you can see all of the different requests that are being made in the background. You can see there's all these different API calls that are being made and you get to see them all at a first glance without having to go through them one by one. I think this is really, really cool because it allows me kind of sort through them based on the method, based on the host, kind of see everything at a first glance before I dive into them deeper. With that comes our next tab to look at. We're just gonna go back to the top as our site map. You can see these are all the different sites that I have navigated to in the past or right now as we're speaking. So for example, if I go look at Airbnb, you can see that Airbnb.com has all these different ones. If I look for FF, you can see that these were the paths that we went to and so on. So pretty standard, nothing super uh, exciting here or different. Then you have your scope tab here. You can actually create a new preset. Uh, I actually created one on accident right now, but the way I like to use that, as you can see in my projects is based on what I'm doing. So my pen test going to the pen test, my bug bounty programs going to bug bounties. You can create these presets based on the target. So for this one, if I'm doing ff.me, the scope for it is ff.me and I don't want to maybe catch anything from google.com. I can create it and save it. And now if I go to my sitemap or my intercept, I can actually set my scope and it will no longer catch anything that is not related to that scope. So I'm gonna open up FF again and now 
if I refresh the page and start forwarding, you can see that the only things that are being sent is only from FF. So that's pretty standard. The filters is what you can create to filter what gets intercepted and what doesn't. So here it's just skipping everything that is an image. So it's called no image. It's just not going to intercept them. You can create your own. We've talked about intercept and then we have our history. Here it's where you see all the data that's been sent back and forth between your browser and Kaido. You can actually sort these based on the host, based on the method, based on status code, extension, state, and also the response length. Also pretty standard, you have your WebSocket history, similar to your HTTP history. Then you have your match and replace. And one of my favorite thing about Kaido is actually the match and replace because it allows you to make a bunch of them, but the one thing that saves me a lot of time in this case is I can actually test it out. So let me show you what I mean. We're going to make it true false where everything becomes true or actually everything becomes false when the keyword true shows up. And I can actually make this become the response header, for example. I actually make, let's make this the request body. And if I want to test it out, I can test right now. It's, I push test. It resends this entire request and it comes back with it. But what I want to test out is if I actually type in true somewhere, is it going to make this work? And we can see right here that the true turned into false. I can't stress enough how many times I've actually made a mistake where I picked the wrong thing and I just couldn't figure out what it was. And this allows me to save a lot of time by just writing a simple HTTP request and testing this out and making sure that it happens in the right place. So if I want to do it in the headers, same thing I could do true somewhere in the middle and I send it, it becomes false right there. So it's really, really helpful. I use this for a lot of my automated stuff. You can put XSS payload here and every time you type it in into the address bar, it would maybe do something like this or you can maybe put something like a blind XSS payload in there or other avenues. I think this is really, really cool. I like the way they've implemented this and it kind of makes me think like Kaido is putting a lot of time and efforts into making it more efficient with a focus on how data is being categorized and organized for the users. Which brings us to our next portion of this video, which is a replay, which is kind of similar to all the other proxy tools. You can actually request a page right here. When it comes up, you can right click and send it to repeater. Or you can just do a command R and it goes here. Pretty simple stuff. You can test it out. You can uh, add stuff here and send it and you can keep fuzzing it. It would keep it in here but the thing that i do like the most that stands out to me is the collections so for somebody like me that opens up a million different tabs between each session i could actually categorize them so i can first create a new collection up here actually new session new collection and i can call this one for example api or interesting api calls so anything that looks like an api that calls interesting i can drag and drop it in there then i can make another one that's potential lead so i can go create session new collection and name this one oops let's call it rename it and say uh potential ssrf for example if i haven't figured it out and i can just drag and drop it in there i really like this about kato it's making it super easy to categorize and organize your content so kudos to them for thinking about this now the next thing we want to jump into really quickly is the automate automate is also very similar to replay you have your sessions you can you can actually go here, copy a session or your request, automate and paste it, or you can just go right click on it and send it here. This is also pretty standard. All you can do is you can do sequential. You can give it a, I can fuzz for things actually. So if I wanted to look for a, let's do here, we're going to do param mining. Let's make sure this is off. So if we wanted to kind of fuzz for parameters for this lab right here, we can just grab the path, put it in here and say test equals to, and here we can put our payloads in a bunch of different ways. One is you can actually go in here. Once you've created it, you can uh, mark where you want to test. So I'm going to test right here. And you can actually use your hosted files, which you can host them right here. You can go to files and import or drag and drop files that you want to use, whether it's your word list or files that you want to use in a pen test based on parameters, file names, subdomains, whatever it is, you can host them in here. And every time you go to automate, it will just pop up right there and you can use it. Now, I don't really want to promote any of the paid functionality within Kaido, but there's one thing that I really, really like. And actually, I just got my hands on this recently is the workflows. In workflows, you actually are able to create your own. But what's really cool is you can actually put a shell between what happens with your request in Kaido. So for example, in here, it says on intercept request, I want you to feed it into the shell. So I'm going to just connect these two. And when I click on shell, we can actually write 
some cool stuff in here. So we can say, hey, every time a Kaido URL, I think that's how you do it. You say Kaido URL. In here, I want you to uh, feed it, or we can say echo it, and then I want you to feed it to another tool. So let's say if you're doing Link Finder, for example, or if you wanted to feed it into an XSS tool, for example, that looks for one that I believe alerts you, you can actually pipe these into different tools and have it do some stuff in Shell, which honestly makes it really interesting because it allows you to do more than just fuzzing with workflows and actually you can create a functionality here that maybe creates word lists for you as well. So one of the examples that actually Ian created in presenting this in his Discord channel was he was creating a word list based on all these URLs, but just cutting through them, putting a delimiter with the slash, and then dumping them into a file. And if you're going after an API, you can get unlimited amounts of API endpoints, and then you can just make it unique and store them on GitHub for a later use. So that's a really, really cool functionality that could help with data, but also some automation and vuln findings as well. Now let's answer the golden question of whether or not Kaido is a replacement for Burp Suite. At this point in time, with Kaido being in beta, I don't think they're fully just there yet. But honestly, with how many new features they're developing in the short amount of time that I've been using it, I think they're going to be catching up to this soon enough. But honestly, that also depends on your use case. If you heavily rely on plugins and maybe Burb Suite Scanner, then maybe this tool isn't for you. But for somebody like me that wants to do things in Shell, for example, that I showed you guys earlier, or just uses the intercept and proxy for most of the time, I think this is a great tool. And honestly, once they start launching this product and they have more futures, who knows, maybe it will catch up. So I don't think it's fully there for the traditional use of a HTTP proxy, but I think in the future, they're gonna catch up and get there. And speaking of futures, if you actually wanna request a future, or you wanna see where they are with their roadmap, you can go on to GitHub, click on this roadmap, and you kind of see all the upcoming releases and 0.79, they're gonna have all these different ones, 7.10 and so on. You can also actually go into the specific issues that have been created by the users and upvote them. So for example, if you wanna do what I wanna do and you want this feature to be shareable between projects, do me a favor, go to 582 and give us a thumbs up. But this is how they receive feedback. If a future request has been created, and it gets enough upvote, then they prioritize it and create it in one of their upcoming releases. So do me a favor, if you have a GitHub account, go to that URL, look for 582 and hit that thumbs up and let them know that Naomi sent you by giving that a thumbs up and making it happen. All right, that's it. If you haven't already, do all the liking, subscribing and commenting and I will...